Solomon. Solomon, Soroman, class name Castor, Kayasuda, is a Castor class servant summoned by Marisberry Animusphere in the first summoning ritual performed by Chaldea Security Organization, participating in the first Fuyuki Holy Grail War of the Fate slash Grand Order timeline. He qualifies for the position of Grand Caster, Garando Kayasuda. Solomon, who was named the King of Magecraft, Majitsu O, for his mastery over Magecraft, was the son of David and Bathsheba. Alive from around 1011 BC to 931 BC, he ruled as the third king of ancient Israel, and was said to be a great king who made the country enormously prosper. He was known for making many excellent political measures in his position as king, but also left behind many anecdotes as a magus. He married the daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh, but was said to be later visited by God while he was dreaming on his bed. God said to Solomon, You are qualified. Speak your wishes. I shall grant them, but Solomon only sought wisdom more so than gold or political power. The answer satisfied God, the answer being proof that Solomon possessed the qualifications to obtain true wisdom. Solomon awoke with ten rings upon both hands, the proof of a wise man recognized by God. Those rings came to be recognized as the Ring of Solomon, the source of the magecraft that employs angels and demons. Solomon came to be known for employing 72 demon gods as his familiars, later leaving behind a manuscript that came to be called the Lemagitan or Goetia that tells of the art of controlling demons. He was the first individual to build the Temple of Israel. During his tenure, Solomon only accomplished a single miracle, but that was also said to exemplify his prudence. It was said that the people knowing that the king is receiving God's protection only a single time was best because more miracles could have served to frighten or corrupt the people. His single revelation established a phenomena operation technique, magecraft that could be performed by the hands of the common man that previously belonged only to those with connections to the god. Even without needing to utilize magecraft, he was recognized by his reputation as the king of magecraft throughout neighboring countries and was said to have left the world as a wise king. His death marked a great acceleration in the decline of mystery, leading to the demise of the Age of Gods 500 years before the time of King Arthur. Some myths also tell that Solomon wedded the Queen of Sheba, who traveled to Jerusalem and tested Solomon's wisdom with three riddles. Rishison, the director of the Mages Association, was one of Solomon's students. Kister Zelrich Schweinord, the wielder of the second magic and founder of the Department of Mineralogy, was as well. Personality Introverted, self-assured and passive a laid-back king, without a hint of seriousness. The gist of his personality is self-assured, but this is simply the power to not read the mood. Thus, he is merely making statements on a self-assured manner, and his nature is that of a chicken. Although serious, he is not earnest and is constantly living at 80% power. He properly ascertained people, properly established laws and properly governed the country. Despite lacking in vigor, he was loved and respected by the masses as a wise, gentle king who was full of love. Yet, none of those traits came from Solomon's own will. Having been ordained as a king from the moment he was born, Solomon had no choice but to hear the voice of God and act accordingly. His psyche is dispassionate and, having been deprived of the freedom to sympathize with the joys and sorrows of people, inhuman. A gentle king that gives off a relaxed sense. Confidence is his main characteristic but it is actually only his ability of being unable to read the mood. As a result, he only makes statements in a confident manner, but is actually a coward, chicken, in his basic nature. Diligent but not earnest, he lives by putting only 80% of his maximum effort. He properly ascertained of the people, properly established the law, and properly governed the country. Although he is somewhat lacking in metal, he is a wise and kind king, full of love, respected and beloved by his people. However, all of those traits are not actually by Solomon's own will. From his birth, he had been ordained to be a king, to hear the voice of God and to live in accordance to it. There is no emotion within him, he is inhuman, deprived of the autonomy to sympathize with the joy and sorrow of the people. It is only when he becomes Romani Archamon that he finally acquires his original human nature. His root is that of a pessimist and realist. Even though he speaks of wishful thinking as a mood maker, Due to himself unable to think of that as more than pipe dreams, he is quite shameless in some respects. He loves humans, but because he's a coward in nature who does not want to see sad things, he ends up limiting himself with superficial relationships. On the other hand, he is capable of being good terms with pretty much everybody. Your typical affable friendly guy. When being faced with a dilemma, he has the bad habit of choosing to stay undecided and devoting himself to just observe, or just straight up runs away, so that the status quo is maintained. 
due to Roman himself reflecting on that weakness of his, it only needs a few words, for someone in his surroundings to simply say, hang in there, for him to somehow hold his ground and display a resolution worthy of the king of magecraft. Incidentally, any servants would end up having, I don't know the reason but this guy's the one at fault here, as their first impression for Roman, and due to that they will unconsciously complain about him. The only ones who don't judge him negatively are those who aren't servants, the contrarians, and the berserkers that don't perceive evil as evil. Abilities Having reached the top of the caster class by meeting high standards in both power and legends, Solomon meets the necessary requirements to be summoned as Grand Caster. As a Grand Servant, Solomon possesses a special Saint Graph of a rank above normal servants and therefore stands at the pinnacle of all heroic spirits. However, when summoned as a regular Caster class servant, his power has been greatly decreased when comparing it to how it was when he was alive. This was confirmed by Goetia, who said that the real alive Solomon could have stopped him and regarded his heroic spirit counterpart as a pathetic fool that would be no match for him. Skills Class Skills Territory Creation, Rank A Creation of a Workshop Territory that is advantageous to himself as a Magus. That ability of his that had created the Temple of Jerusalem is of the highest peak of Territory Creation. High Speed Incantation, Rank C the ability to hasten Thaumaturgical Incantation Speed. Despite being fast, his tendency to worry prones to ruin it and sometimes makes him do a mistake. Item Construction, Rank C Creation of Tools Tinged with Magical Energy. Perhaps because he is specialized in contracts, his item construction ability is on average level. Personal Skills Summoning, rank EX Magecraft that evokes of spiritual bodies of the past, or perhaps the future. With his evocation ability that spoke of the summoned spiritual existences, the 72 demon gods, and established them as capable familiars, he truly lived up to his title of King of Magecraft. Solomon wearing his 10 rings. Solomon's rings, rank EX the ten rings that Solomon attained omnipotence, given by God. The mark of the king, the progenitor of magecraft. In the case of all ten rings present, any and all kinds of magecraft performed by mankind is invalidated and put under his subordination. They are regarded by Dr. Roman as the greatest catalyst possible a master can prepare to fight in a holy grail war. After wishing upon the grail to become a human, Solomon no longer possess all ten rings. The only reason he was in possession of one during the Solomon singularity is that it was the same one Marisberry Animusphere had used as a catalyst to summon him to win the first Fuyuki Holy Grail War of the Fate slash Grand Order timeline which Dr. Roman kept up to that moment. Clairvoyance, rank EX eyesight of good quality. Apprehension of long distance target and elevation of kinetic vision. When the rank is high enough, even X-ray vision or future prediction becomes possible. Solomon's clairvoyance gives him unobstructed view of both the past and the future. Dr. Roman said that due to the potency of said skill, it can essentially be considered omniscience. Revelation, rank be a skill that hears of, the voice from the heavens, and performs the most suitable of actions. While, instinct, is a sixth sense for combat purpose, revelation conforms to all matters in regards to achieving a goal, such as selecting the most suitable road for travel route. Solomon had only ever received one revelation but based on that he had established the phenomena operation technique, that is, magecraft, that even an ordinary person could perform. Until then, magecraft had been a work only for those related to the gods. Noble Phantasms Solomon has three noble phantasms, Ars Nova, Ars Paulina and Ars Almadel Salomones. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.